We're very lucky to have with us for the next hour, Jerry Paulette. Jerry Paulette is co-founder and executive director of Heart of America Northwest. He chairs the Hanford Advisory Board's committee overseeing US DOE's Hanford budgets, management, and contracts. He also has been serving on the board of the Alliance for Nuclear Accountability and the Washington Coalition for Open Government. And in 2005, he was honored with the Paul Beeson Peace Award by Washington Physicians for Social Responsibility. So start out, tell us a little bit about Heart of America Northwest. Well, we were founded in 1987 and now have 16,000 members all over the Northwest uh, to try to get the federal government to do the right thing and clean up Hanford. We've succeeded over the decades of stopping plutonium production at Hanford. It took until the year 2004 when we ran the statewide ballot initiative trying to stop Hanford from being a national radioactive waste dump before the federal government finally ended dumping radioactive waste in unlined ditches. I know this sounds incredible to people, but there are 40 miles of unlined trenches at Hanford, if you stretch them end to end, into which our federal government, your government, was dumping radioactive waste from nuclear weapons production and its own reactors until the year 2004 when we put those pictures um, on air and in our campaign literature for Initiative 297. Um, it's been against the law for decades for a municipal government to dump un in municipal garbage in unlined landfills, but our federal government thinks it's okay for radioactive waste, even though it seeps right out of those trenches and starts moving to the Columbia River. That's related to an important meeting that's coming up on tomorrow, Monday, at uh, Monday at Seattle Center's Northwest Rooms at 7 p.m. is the hearing on the Energy Department's plan to use Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump. They're talking about bringing in and burying 3 million cubic feet of radioactive waste, mostly from nuclear weapons production. And their own analysis in the impact statement, which they were forced to redo, and that's the topic of the hearing, um, their own analysis shows that these landfills will leak, they will contaminate the Columbia River, the contamination levels projected just from the waste they want to bring in will increase the contamination in the groundwater flowing to the river to 100 times our state's cancer risk cleanup standard. The Energy Department also has a plan not to clean up the high-level nuclear waste tank leaks at Hanford, and we're talking about some of the most deadly waste ever created on the planet that's sitting in, in tanks at Hanford, 53 million gallons. Over a million gallons of that deadly high-level nuclear waste has leaked from tanks, and it's spreading rapidly through the soil to the groundwater, and it will move to the Columbia River. So instead of cleaning it up, our federal government says we'll just put dirt caps over this vast area of contamination. Their own analysis shows that that will contaminate the river. Their impact statement, for instance, says that a thousand years from now, under what I call their cover-up plan instead of cleanup, their cover-up plan would result in plutonium-239 levels flowing into the Columbia River at 300 times the drinking water standard. And the drinking water standard, Mike, is set at a level at which one adult for every 10,000 who drink it, who drink the water, die of cancer. So we can all do the math. 300 times means 300 out of 10,000, 30 out of 1,000, 3% of the adults. Our children are 3 to 10 times more susceptible to get cancer and die of cancer than an adult is. This is truly genocidal, what our federal government is proposing to do at Hanford in terms of not cleaning up and dumping more waste when you think about the three tribes that have a treaty right to live along that shoreline of the Columbia River where it flows through Hanford for 50 years. And that's just from drinking the water, is that's that correct? just from drinking the water that is seeping into the Columbia River. That doesn't count things like how it gets multiplied every time a creature consumes it, like the clams or the fish or whatever, and then gets concentrated and people eat that and they get a real good dose. That's right. So it doesn't count what's going to be in the fish. It doesn't count what's going to be in um, the crops that will inevitably be grown there over the next thousands of years. 
Um, and that's just the plutonium level. Then there's the uranium level. Then there's the strontium-90 level. Then there's the, it goes on and on. And the risk of cancer projected is going to be nearly 100% for people using the groundwater um, 100 or 3,000 years from now if Hanford is used as a national radioactive waste dump and the Energy Department gets away with just covering up the leaks of high-level nuclear waste instead of cleaning it up. So we say, why are you spending billions of dollars cleaning up Hanford if you're just going to put dirt over the top of these areas and allow it to be recontaminated within a few decades after you claim you're done? So talk about how they have come up with these options. They just produced an EIS, or they just came out with an EIS that's like 6,000 pages long. Yes, it's 6,000 pages long, and it actually has some um, remarkably honest projections buried deep inside it. You'd never get this from the public notice they've issued. Um, You wouldn't even understand from the public notice that the federal government wants to use Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump, frankly. Um, which is, of course, a huge concern in this region. Um, The Energy Department was required by law to redo a 2004 environmental impact statement in their effort to use Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump. It was uh, such a lousy document that they were forced to redo it, and this is the redo. And so they're holding hearings around the region. Um, They've been at this effort to try to use Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump since the year 2000. And our organization has been leading, putting together coalitions to fight it, and we're very proud that in this city, Seattle, we have Hanford Challenge to work with, Physicians for Social Responsibility. Um, All over the region, we've been turning out the public to hearings, and we had 200 in Portland, which was fabulous, which is downstream. And the state of Oregon has sent a very strong message saying we oppose sending any more waste to Hanford. Um, Now we have to put the pressure on the governor of the state of Washington, unfortunately, who has said rhetorically they oppose adding more waste to Hanford, but hasn't used any of their authority to stop it. Which is interesting considering the governor was a former attorney General? Well, as Attorney General of the State of Washington and Director of the Department of Ecology, she put a lot of feathers in her hat running for governor um, with her stand for the cleanup of Hanford. Um, and um, rhetorically, she says she opposes Hanford being used as national radioactive waste dump. Um, the state has authority over this landfill that they want to use and the state hasn't said it's going to use it. And it's beating our head against the wall, but the public needs to come to the hearing on Monday night at Seattle Center at 7 o'clock and in the Northwest Rooms and say not only to the Energy Department 3,000 miles away, don't dump any more waste here at Hanford. Clean up your mess before you dump any more and clean up those high-level nuclear waste tank leaks to save our Columbia River and future generations, but then to turn to the state official who will be in the front of the room and say, tell the governor to use her authority to make this real. Don't let them get away with this. At 6 o'clock on Monday night, Heart of America Northwest will hold one of its pre-hearing workshops uh, in an adjoining room right there in the Northwest Rooms of Seattle Center at 6 o'clock for a pre-hearing workshop to help the public understand the issues and to be able to, you know, stand up comfortably and make comments or to write down some comments. And so we encourage people to come over at 6 o'clock if they want a little bit of help in preparing their comments. And this is a a pretty rare opportunity where all these government uh, representatives are together in one room to focus on the single issue. I mean, these seem to happen about every year or two. Well, and this one is particularly important hearing. Um, You know, we've waited for six years for them to redo this environmental impact statement and based on this the energy department says a year from now it will be able to simply go ahead and issue decisions to dump the waste at Hanford and to cover up instead of cleaning up the high-level nuclear waste leaks and the discharges and the, the levels of contamination as I said are staggering when they say they're going to leave the 
a million gallons of contamination in the ground. They're, what they're not telling the public is that they also l deliberately dumped out of the high-level nuclear waste tanks in the 1950s and 1960s billions of gallons of liquids into the soil. And that stuff is all moving through the soil to the Columbia River. And it is very, very toxic. It is radioactive. It includes uranium that with half-lives of hundreds of thousands of years and plutonium and technetium-90 and strontium-90 and technetium-99, excuse me, and all sorts of chemicals as well. And um, it's a witch's brew of deadly wastes, and it's all moving towards our lifeblood, the Columbia River. And in fact, on a lot of those mixes and in a lot of these tanks, they don't even know for sure what chemicals are in there. Is that correct? That's right. And that's what makes it really scary when they say, well, we don't want to empty the tanks all the way to the extent we know we can technically, but we want to leave 1% of the waste. 1% doesn't sound bad, but 1% of this unknown mixture is a lot because 1% of 53 million gallons is a half million gallons. And what the impact statement failed to do was to explain and take into account for the fact that the stuff at the bottom of the tank is much more concentrated than the average. So they just modeled based on what the average is in the tanks when what's in the bottom is probably the radionuclides are 10 times more concentrated in the bottom. And um, we're talking about really horrific levels of radiation. So for the longest time, wasn't the U.S. pushing towards moving all its nuclear waste to Yucca Mountain? This waste that they're talking about bringing to Hanford is not the commercial reactor fuel, the spent fuel out of commercial reactors that they had proposed for Yucca Mountain. Um, this is from new nuclear weapons production. Some of it, however, is going to be as radioactive as high-level nuclear waste. And, but instead of being deep underground, they're proposing putting it in a shallow landfill. It's unconscionable. And we support the Obama administration's pulling the plug on Yucca Mountain because the only way it could meet groundwater protection standards was by changing the standards, which Congress voted to do. Um, that's going to bite our state in the butt because some of our state's congressional delegation apparently supported weakening those standards. We rely on those standards to protect the river. And Nevada has lost an ally in Washington state, unfortunately. Talk about one of the things that the DOE, the feds, have uh, offered as a solution to all our nuclear uh, ills is this vitrification plant. What's that going to do for us? So there are 53 million gallons of high-level nuclear waste sitting in tanks at Hanford, and 149 of those tanks are these very old single-shell tanks, um, many of which have leaked over a million gallons of high-level nuclear waste into the soil. And for decades, the Energy Department has said, we're going to build a plant to turn that liquid high-level nuclear waste into a glass form, and that will solve the problem, getting the waste out of the tanks and into a glass form so it won't leak into the environment. 10% of the glass with the hottest waste would go to a deep geologic repository, um, which doesn't exist, so a hypothetical repository. Um, for the waste from the hypothetical vitrification plant. So vitrification means glassification, and this is the world's biggest treatment plant, and it was supposed to be built between 2000 and 2011 at a cost of just over $4 billion. And right now, it is already way has cost way over $4 billion already. It's about half built, and its cost estimate is now $12 billion, so it's $8 billion over budget, and it's a decade behind schedule. It's not slated to start up until the year 2019. And for the hottest wastes, there are a lot of questions about whether or not it will actually work because of those unknown chemicals that you talked about earlier, Mike. Um, 
They don't know what's in the chemistry of these tanks, and it poses serious problems. And then there's the little bit of problem that the Energy Department lets its contractors run rampant. These are the same people who um, you've heard about in Iraq and Afghanistan, you know, Bechtel and Floor and the other big defense contractors of our country. And um, Bechtel is building this plant. And um, the country, our United States government had the bright idea that you would allow the company to start building the plant, the most complex treatment plant ever attempted on the planet, without fully designing it. So they started doing what they call design build or fast track. So they started building before fully designing it. And guess what? They had to change designs several times along the way. They ignored whistleblower engineers who said that they weren't designing it to a seismic risk standard. They had to change the seismic criteria and the engineering. They did things like put a uh, plan for pipes with right angles in them, which is a no-no in chemical processing plants. Um, the list goes on and on. And we have serious doubts, as do many engineers, about whether or not um, the high-level portion of the plant will work. Um, the low-activity waste, the 90% of volume that is lesser radiation glass, is supposed to be buried in a landfill at Hanford. It's a kind of a myth that this waste is all going to Yucca Mountain, which isn't going to open. 90% um, of it stays on site at Hanford under their plan, and this impact statement shows that that 90% will recontaminate the Columbia River. So not a great plan that we've got here for getting it out of the ground, but glass is much better than leaky high-level nuclear waste tanks. So we've got to make this plant work, and we've got to get the Energy Department to do it right. Wasn't BNFL involved with the no. plant? Um, in the, in the mid-90s, um, British Nuclear Fuels um, had the contract to build the plant, and under a privatization scheme pushed by, um, at the time, Senator Slade Gorton, Hiss, um, and Congressman Doc Hastings from the Tri-Cities and uh, industry, they were going to privatize the construction of this plant, and it was an unfettered disaster. I testified to Congress about the economics of this, that it was um, absolutely stupid, just uh, immediately on the surface that you take billions of dollars of cost and add in all the financing. And um, Wall Street was going to make a ton of money. BNFL would make a ton of money, and the taxpayer would pay two to three times more for the same facility than they would have if you just build it as a government facility. And they finally, uh, I can't remember everything that displaced them, but one of the things was they got caught forging uh, x-rays of their parts saying that they were good when they weren't. Um, there's been problems with uh, um, x-rays being forged in the high-level waste tank farms, um, not in the vitrification mm. plant itself, but yes, I mean, there's, there have been, you know, the quality assurance issues are very scary because there's a nuclear facility and um, uh, there have been a lot of problems with quality assurance. There have been problems with um, the adequacy of the equipment that's going into what they call the black cell areas. That are areas that will be too radioactive to ever replace the parts inside them. And they found that some of the parts weren't up to nuclear standards. Um, so um, the quality assurance list goes on and on about this. Now, getting back to, again, the what's going to be covered uh, on the hearing tomorrow, they've presented in their EIS, their 6,000-page EIS, they present options for different problems that they're dealing with out there. Can you talk about that? For instance, the options yeah. for, like, the single-shell tanks, how much to remove mm -hmm. from those? And I should say that there is a citizen's guide to each of these decisions and their impacts online at www.hoanw.org. That's our initials, Heart of America Northwest.org, H-O-A-N-W.org. And there's a citizen's guide right there that Mike has in front of him. And it outlines each decision and each of the major options the Energy Department says it's considering and what are their impacts and suggested public comment. So for the high-level nuclear waste tanks, the Energy Department says... 
Um, we're going to consider emptying only 90% of the waste from the tanks, 99% of the waste from the tanks, or 99.9% .9 to the extent practical. And the Energy Department says it would prefer, and if it can make the decision today, it would choose the option that leaves 1% of the waste in the tanks. That doesn't sound so bad, 1%. But 1% of 53 million gallons of deadly high-level nuclear waste is a lot. And as we mentioned earlier, that isn't really 1% of the radioactivity of those wastes. It's probably 10 to 20% of the radiation, um, especially the long-lived radionuclides with heavy metals. And their own model shows that, for instance, um, about 1,800 years from now, those tanks would be leaking uranium into the groundwater moving to the Columbia River at dozens of times the drinking water standard. Um, so if you leave 1% of the waste with 10% of the very heavy metal radionuclides in the bottom of the tank, it leaks back out over uh, several hundred and several thousand years, and it will kill many people who use the drinking water um, the groundwater for drinking purposes, which will be happening. Um, it's essentially predicting Love Canal over and over and over and over again for our grandchildren and their grandchildren. Um, so that's one option. The next option is whether or not to clean up the waste that has leaked from the tanks. And the Energy Department's proposal for the waste that has leaked from the tanks and the billions of gallons of liquid waste that was discharged deliberately out of the tanks when they ran out of room in the tanks. Um, their option, they, let, they give it a fancy name, of course, landfill closure. It doesn't sound bad. After all, you close landfills. Um, but this is essentially putting a cover um, of dirt and rock over the top of several square miles and walking away instead of cleaning up the waste that's in the ground. And so we call it a cover-up, not a clean-up. And their own model shows that this contaminates the groundwater to dozens and hundreds of times the drinking water standard, hundreds of times our state cancer risk standard um, for cleanup of toxic waste sites. And it will reach the Columbia River. Um, and so we call for what is called a clean closure, which is what state has in its waste law says you do at every toxic waste site. You attempt to clean up the contamination in the soil to the extent practical, and only then do you get away with putting a cover over the top of it. And the difference in terms of groundwater contamination and cancer risk, the Energy Department's own impact analysis shows that cleaning up the soil to the extent practical with today's technology would save many, many lives over hundreds and thousands of years because we can predict that people will be using the groundwater and getting cancer if we don't do it. Do we have the technology to clean that up, or is it just basically trying to collect it and, and store that you know, well, contaminated dirt? Cleanup is a weird term in this context because so we can turn, theoretically, the liquid high-level nuclear waste into glass, but there's so much contamination in the soil that you're not going to turn all of that into glass, but you can dig up the contaminated soil and you can um, use different processes to extract radioactivity out of that soil and then run it through the glassification plant so that it's immobilized. And um, so we can do a lot that is really cleaning it up, not just scooping it up and putting it into a landfill without uh, any further treatment, which is just delaying the harm by a few decades. Yeah, it doesn't seem like much of a solution just pouring dirt on top of that. Obviously, no. dirt is going to let the rain go through and everything else. Is that just to keep people safe from, to, so that they can walk over it for another couple years or... Yeah, it doesn't do much at all. Um, the contamination still moves through the soil to the groundwater if you just put a dirt cover over the top. Uh, we know that. Their own model shows that. Um, what we need to be doing is actually digging it up and treating the contamination that's moving deeper and deeper every year. So the more you wait, 
the more costly it is. And unfortunately, the Energy Department looks at this analysis, sees that it's better to clean it up, and still says our preferred alternative, the decision we would make if we could make it today, is to leave it in the ground where we know it will kill people who are using the groundwater. Not just the Native American tribes with a treaty right to live along and fish the river where the groundwater seeps out, but we know that people will be using this area. The groundwater is an incredibly valuable resource. Have to remember that the area of contaminated groundwater at Hanford today would cover the entire land area of the city of Seattle. We're talking about an immense area to say, well, even though we know that we won't be able to pull more water out of the Columbia River, we're going to let more of this valuable groundwater to be contaminated. We know people are going to be drilling wells and using it. Jerry, what are uh, some of the other critical issues? I, in fact, one of the things that we were, we were covering for a long time was the fast flux test facility. What is that and what's happening to that? People may remember that we fought for about 10 years to shut down the FFTF nuclear reactor at Hanford, which was a breeder reactor, test bed breeder reactor, that the Energy Department and nuclear weapons proponents wanted to restart to make tritium for nuclear weapons. That's the H and the H-bomb. And um, they had this cover story that they were going to make uh, medical isotopes, but mostly it was about plutonium and um, tritium for nuclear weapons. And um, we won that battle to shut it down. Now the <clears throat> impact statement covers what should happen with the reactor. Should it be entombed or dismantled. And um, at the hearing on this impact statement in the Tri-Cities, we heard people trying to resurrect the reactor. So we do need people to come out to the hearing and say, take it down. Um, that's what our state standard is for any nuclear reactor. If people familiar with the, where the Trojan nuclear reactor was on the Columbia downstream along I-5 on the Oregon side, they know that it was taken down entirely. The reactor vessel was removed and um, uh, it, the whole site was restored. And that's what we need to happen to the FFTF nuclear reactor. It's absolutely bizarre, Mike, that after all these years of fighting to have it shut down, you know, we're excited to see you know, a discussion of how you clean up that facility, remove it. That's exciting. And then you go to, we go to the hearing in Richland and you have all these discussions in this impact statement, all these proposed decisions about dumping more waste at Hanford, um, abandoning high-level nuclear waste to contaminate the ground and the groundwater in the Columbia River. And the only people who testified in the Tri-Cities were five people who said, we want to restart the nuclear, the FFTF nuclear reactor. Don't take it apart at all. And um, the only, and we testified along with other people from the public interest community saying, let's protect our groundwater and future generations from the high level nuclear wastes. It's going to be, it's important to clean up to the extent fully, it's good for your economy um, to do cleanup. And their message was just resurrect the FFTF nuclear reactor as part of their nuclear renaissance dream. For, did they give like a purpose beyond that for more medical isotopes? Oh, they, they, it seems they, like they could just go out of, with a shovel and get those, you know? Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. Um, there's enough plutonium in the ground at Hanford to make more than 50 nuclear bombs. And that's part of what they just want to leave in the soil. I mean, it's just outrageous. So it isn't a joke, really, to say you can go out there with a shovel and get more isotopes. Um, uh, some of these people are just true believers. In, you know, yeah, they believe in that you, you're going to get medical isotopes they, uh, out of, from running the reactor, even though every study was that that was impractical. Um, and the real purpose of Restart was for nuclear weapons. These people mostly see it as part of the nuclear renaissance. They want to have a nuclear fuel cycle that uses breeder reactors and takes the fuel out of regular reactors, melts it down in acid, and re-extracts the plutonium for breeder reactors. Um, well, Hanford has a good lesson for the world about this. Remember all that high-level nuclear waste sitting in those tanks with no treatment plant in sight? 
53 million gallons of liquid high-level nuclear waste sitting at Hanford. That was all produced by reprocessing spent fuel rods to extract plutonium. And that's exactly what the nuclear industry is touting as its solution for not having a deep underground repository. That's what McCain was touting during the campaign. It's what the energy secretary says is part of the solution. It's melting down the fuel rods, extracting plutonium. It happens to be what we're afraid the Iranians are going to do with their fuel rods to extract plutonium for weapons, because you don't know if it's going into a reactor or a bomb. And um, Hanford has a lesson for the world here about nuclear power, and people are ignoring it. I'm out talking about it at university campuses and community forums all over the Northwest, occasionally around the country, that the lessons from Hanford include the fact that reprocessing, which is touted as the renaissance of nuclear fuel for the nuclear industry, is a horrible, deadly legacy sitting at Hanford. Now, is it even possible for him to put FFTF back online? Because theoretically, didn't they tell us that they were filling it, the pipes with salt water or something and they were going to solidify? Well, it was a sodium-cooled reactor, okay. and they drained the sodium, um, which is a liquid metal, essentially, and they drained that, and um, sodium reacts with air and so, or moisture and can explode. So you don't want to try to put the sodium back in that piping because it could be horrendously, uh, well, catastrophic. Um, and so we're pretty certain that it's a dead horse and these people are just trying to beat it so that they can get back up and it's not going to work. You can't beat the dead horse and get it to sit back up and start the race again. Um, so we're hoping people will say, take it apart all the way at the hearing. Um, or when they send in comments online. And what about the other facilities that are out there? What is currently still being used? Well, there is a large processing area just north of the city of Richland, which the Energy Department had promised that these highly contaminated buildings were all going to be taken down. And there were about 80 buildings, and they've taken down probably two-thirds of them. Um, uh, unfortunately, the most contaminated ones that are used for such things as melting down fuel rods, um, the Energy Department wants to keep and keep using them for another 20 years. We have reason to believe that they've done some nuclear weapons work in those buildings in recent years, um, contrary to claims that the Energy Department is only doing cleanup work at Hanford. Um, well, we know from uh, some litigation documents that they did work on tritium for nuclear weapons there. And um, we think that they want to keep using those buildings for another 20 years um, for that purpose. Um, then there are other buildings at Hanford that process plutonium. And um, some of them are being taken down, which is great. And then there's the huge construction project $8 billion over budget for the vitrification plant, and that'll go on for decades. And so the talk is that Hanford cleanup is going to take 50 more years to do right, and we do need to do it right. 50 years plus what, uh, however long they keep manufacturing right. weapon-related parts right. out there, right? Right. So we need to try to prevent them from continuing to make more nuclear weapons material or using Hanford as part of the nuclear weapons complex. And it's very important. The reason the Energy Department wants to use Hanford as a national radioactive waste dump is because the Energy Department and the Obama administration is now supporting this, wants to modernize the nuclear weapons complex. And they need a cheap place to dump waste from nuclear weapons production, and they think Hanford is it. And so their proposal is to start importing waste to Hanford in 10 years and run it as a national radioactive waste dump for nuclear weapons production through the year 2045, approximately. Um, so decades more of uh, dumping waste in a landfill from nuclear weapons production. And that's the future they have for Hanford, 
we see a future of no more dumping of waste, cleaning up what's there, truly cleaning up, not covering it up, and protecting the health of future generations and the Columbia River from the contamination that they project at hundreds of times the drinking water standard for adults who would be exposed. And we're concerned, of course, about the children who will be along the Columbia River or drinking that water out of groundwater wells. I had heard, I, I haven't heard this firsthand, but that uh, when uh, President Obama was touring through this area during the, uh, the pre-election cycle, that uh, he had been fielded a question about Hanford, and he said that he had no idea about Hanford. Have you had, or any other local organizations, had any interaction with the new Obama administration? And does how much difference does that make when you consider people at, like the Department of Energy don't seem to really change that much when each new administration comes along? Yeah. Unfortunately, the uh, yes, President Obama, when he was campaigning, infamously said he didn't know what Hanford was when he was in Oregon and said uh, something along the lines of, well, I'll know something about it by the time I get in my bus. Um, but um, doesn't seem to have gotten the message that it's not okay to use this large area next to the Columbia River as a national radioactive waste dump. Um, we have seen some progress under the Obama administration in that the Obama administration's commitment to open government um, has done things like allow us to have eight hearings all over the region on this proposal, which would never have happened under the Bush administration. Um, we asked for hearings in places where there have never been hearings on Hanford, like Eugene, um, Eastern Oregon. Um, believe it or not, the Energy Department for several years has refused to hold a public hearing in Spokane about Hanford. They're downwind and they rely on the river. And um, uh, so we had a hearing, great hearing in Spokane about this proposal. Um, so there's been some progress on the open government front, which is a hallmark of the Obama administration. Um, uh, but we still see um, the Energy Department the, is being led by an ideologue um, from the nuclear weapons complex, Stephen Chu, and a true believer in nuclear technology instead of, you know, there was a lot of talk, oh, he's an advocate for re renewables, but they're putting billions and billions of dollars into nuclear energy and billions into nuclear weapons modernization. And that leaves no money left over for renewables. And um, we're seeing them shortcut cleanup. Um, uh, so they're not willing to deal with their legacy. They just want to build more. All right. Well, I want to thank Thanks. you very much for coming in and spending time with us this morning.